Hello fellow coffee botherers, I'm Kev from coffeeblog.co.uk and in this video I'm going to be doing a follow-up on the review I did recently of the Sage Bambino Plus Espresso Machine of a Bob. In that video I struggled a bit with the, or quite a lot actually, with the auto milk texturing when it came to temperature. And I said in that video that was one thing when it came to the auto milk texturing that didn't seem to work properly was the temperature. Now, after the video, I spoke to Sage about that, who told me that the three milk settings should have been much lower. So something didn't work properly. And I think that something was actually me. I actually did a bit of studying of the video to see what I was doing. And what I've noticed from the video is, this is the auto milk sensor here, the temperature sensor. And I had the milk jug. You could just see on the video that it was just just off the bottom of the drip tray. Now what that means is that it wasn't, the jug wasn't on the milk sensor or maybe just slightly on the milk sensor, it wasn't on it properly. Now if you read the manual, which I don't tend to do, it does state that you need to have the milk jug over this temperature sensor. It has to be fully over the auto milk sensor. So in this video, I'm gonna try again with the auto milk texturing and see if I do get the kind of temperatures that I should be getting with this machine using it for auto steaming. So we'll turn the machine on and count to three because that's how long it takes to heat up. There you go. That was three seconds. Let's just see what happens with the steam after three seconds warm up. Not bad, eh? So a machine that's warmed up and ready to steam that quickly. Quite impressive. So let's try doing this again. Trying to get the right temperature, actually using the machine properly now because I actually know how to use it. I'll put it on the lowest milk setting and we'll put it on the lowest milk texture. Let's see what we get. It would help if I put milk in the jug. Now we have milk in the jug. Right, so this time, instead of having the jug sort of here, I'm pushing it back to make sure that it is actually on that temperature sensor. So let's give that a try. Is almost bang on what it should be, which is just over 50 degrees or hang on, yeah, 55 degrees. Okay, so we've got to the bottom of it. It is because I didn't have the milk jug pushed back far enough so it wasn't properly touching the milk sensor because I'm a Muppet. So on the lowest temperature setting, we've got 55 degrees Celsius. Okay, so temperature setting two, the middle. And just out of interest, I'm gonna change the foam to two as well. So that's in the middle, the amount of foam. And again, I'm putting it over the temperature sensor. I'm not doing this, doing that. Let's try that again. Let's see where we are temperature wise now on temperature setting two, slightly over 60. That's more like it. So now I'm gonna do the temperature on the highest setting, three, and that as well take the texture up to the highest foam setting as well. And again, I'm not putting it like that, which was how I did it last time in the original video. I'm pushing it back to make sure it's over the temperature sensor. It's done. Check the temperature. 72, 73 maybe. Actually, not bad. It is a bit thicker, a bit more foam than I would normally use. But actually, when I swirled it and polished it off, it did integrate quite well, so it's not all that bad. Just out of interest now, I'm gonna do that again, but on the middle 
texture setting, the middle foam setting, and the middle temperature setting. Again, I'm not doing that, which I did last time. I'm doing that so it's over the temperature sensor. Almost bang on 65. So I'd probably stick to the middle temperature setting. Now when it comes to the texture, let's try that. Texture looks pretty good. Looks like gloss paint. Try not to mess up the pour. Not bad at all. That's from Auto Textured Milk. It's around the right temperature, about 65. That was almost bang on 65. And that, as you can see, is pretty good milk texture. Can't really fault that for auto milk texturing. So there we go. To conclude, I am a Muppet. And in the last video, I had the milk jug not properly touching the temperature sensor. So you have to push the jug back to make sure it's fully covering this temperature sensor, which I didn't do. And now I've done that, I take back everything I said about the temperature. Obviously it's gonna change slightly depending on the temperature of the milk and I don't know, other things. How much milk you put in the jug, for example. But if you put it in the middle temperature setting, you should get close to 65 Celsius. Try it. If you find you're getting closer to 65, at the highest temperature then stick to the highest temperature whatever works for you but as i say just now doing this testing i found that the middle temperature setting gave me almost bang on 65 which is perfect and also as you've just seen the ability for this machine to texture milk for latte art is way better than i said it was in the original video review. I said it wasn't quite perfect. I couldn't quite get latte art out of it. And I think that is just because I was messing it up because I was getting the wrong milk temperature because it was too hot. So as you've just seen, you can get almost, you know, very, very close to perfect texture for latte art with the auto steaming feature of the Sage Bambino Plus, which is very, very impressive. I do stick by what I said, which is that you can get slightly closer to perfection with practice, with manual steaming, than you would be able to with auto. But as you've just seen, just by putting the jug there in the right position and pressing the button, you can get texture, which is almost perfect for latte art. In the next video with the Sage Bambino Plus, I'm going to be retesting using the dual wall baskets because another thing I said in the first video is that it didn't do well with pre-ground coffee. And what Sage have pointed out, which is very true, is that I was using one type of coffee, which was a light roast, a light roasted Ethiopian uh, yoga chair. And roasters, when they're grinding bags of pre-ground, they'll have a one size fits all for espresso and for filter and for cafetiere. They won't have various different espresso grinds and they tend to be on the more coarse side which means that when you're using a dual wall basket or a pressured basket, and if you are using pre-ground, and I personally wouldn't recommend using pre-ground at all, if you have a grinder and you grind your own coffee, it's gonna make a massive difference to the quality of your espresso over using pre-ground. But if you are using pre-ground, if you get a darker roast, that slightly more coarse grind that you tend to get in pre-ground, machines with a dual wall or a pressured basket will fare better at getting the desired extraction from a darker roast bean as opposed to a lighter roast bean which tend to need finer grinding. So we'll test that out in the next video, but for now, tatty bye. And in this video, I'm going to be doing a little, little, little. hello fellow coffee but who's waiting? A bus just went past, brilliant. And it was empty.